Uh, keep me rolling. Fuck. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Uh, let's see here. Yada yada yada. Yeah, I think I get the gist of it. So, procedural generation of video games. Let's talk about that. First off, it's important to define what procedural generation is. It's just when a computer is used to create data and sort of has a organized randomness effect. Um, you'll see it in movies when a monster has like a like a texture on their skin, like a like a scales, or a company is trying to make their energy drink look really powerful. Uh, those explosions might use procedural generation to sort of make it look more realistic, more natural, more naturally random. And but for video games. The difference is what we're going to be talking about is um, terrain and how video games often use that to make large scale worlds that are accessible to the player without having the burden of go by hand and create all of these uh, different uh, hills and rocks and whatever. Now, this technology for procedural generation, it has been around for a very long time. To start, we're going to go all the way back to 1978, uh, which is a lot longer than you'd think this technology has been around to a, a just very well-known game called Beneath Apple Manor, which I'm sure all of you have definitely heard of. But for the just a few of you who may have not heard about this, you know, one hit, amazing game, you know. Um, basically, it's about a warrior going through 10 floors to get to an apple and win the game. So, you know, super deep storytelling. Um, but the way it used procedural generation is that each floor you'd go through would be randomly made. So every time you played the game and went through the 10 floors, it would be different. That kind of was the status quo for a while until about 30-ish years later in uh, 2008 when a game called Spore came out. The whole concept for Spore is that you kind of start out as this microbe and you sort of work, you evolve your way up all the way to a space-faring civilization going through the stages of life in a much faster pace um and it's a it was a very it was a very popular game when it came out and it was a revolutionary game since it used procedural generation terrain meaning that every time you booted up a new game the land would always be different because it was procedurally generated and for th that time period it was good for about a year until a small swedish indie developer came out with this little small game it's called minecraft to the to date it's the probably the most popular um, procedurally generated game. It uses a, a sort of style of procedural generation that uh, takes a random set of letters and numbers called a seed, and then we'll use that to create all of its terrain and structures as it goes along, as the player explores the world. Now, in the more modern time, about you know last couple of years or so, it's been really popular with uh, sci-fi space exploration games. Uh, there's games like Elite Dangerous, which have simulated the entirety of the Milky Way galaxy using procedural generation to sort of make all the planets. And there's plenty of games like that have been very popular and sort of doing the same thing. But there also have been some really big ones, which we'll get to a little later. First up is going to be small scale. Games like, well, Beneath the Apple Manor, which we saw early on, are considered small scale games. They are small levels that are procedurally generated and are often things you can see within one screen. A more modern equivalent to that game is a game called Worldbox. Worldbox is a sort of top-down 2D sandbox simulator. You basically can play God, whether that's placing some humans and some orcs and some other civilizations like elves or something and seeing what happens and just watching them grow. It's, it's a watch and see what happens kind of game, which takes advantage of those procedural generation land masses that it uses um, to make sure that every time you sort of are messing around, it's not always the exact same like circumstance. You're not watching the same civilization do the exact same thing, because everything's almost a little bit random, but still organized. Next up would be the medium scale. So these are going to be games like Spore and Minecraft, which are pretty big, but aren't the biggest out there. For instance, Spore, its worlds are only about 830 meters in diameter, like just like shy of a mile. Now games like Minecraft, which is only maybe really one planet, are a lot bigger. Um, Minecraft, for instance, is about 60 million by 60 million in-game blocks, which equates to about five times the size of Earth and about, about the size of Neptune. So 
it's pretty big. It gives lots of players lots of space to do kind of anything. Next up is large scale. So these are the games that are from that sci-fi space sort of genre. Uh, games like Elite Dangerous, which simulate the Milky Way galaxy, uh, are really big, but they're not the biggest. That would go to No Man's Sky, which has over 18 quintillion unique planets, which is absolutely ridiculous. Like, it's just absurd. And to put that into, like, frame of reference, if you gave every person on Earth a copy of No Man's Sky and had them all playing on the same server at the same time, everyone on Earth would still have over 2.3 billion planets all to themselves. And it's not even just the planets that are unique. The creatures and the plant life and the fauna and everything on there also are procedurally generated, which makes it so you'll get really alien-like creatures. It makes it so much more immersive into that concept. And looking at it now, seeing where we are at this current point, it's gonna be insane to see how in the future, or even the near future, how this technology is gonna rapidly just develop and create even more in-depth experiences that have more procedural generation in them. But for now, that's a bit of a pipe dream. There's no way of knowing what's gonna happen next, and I'd rather just sort of enjoy the moment. So I'm gonna get back to my game because I should probably not leave it running. I don't wanna die, so.